In today's Community Spotlight, we're taking a look at a little project called the Home Assistant Button Box. And this box does exactly what it says. It's a box that connects to Home Assistant, and it's got a bunch of buttons on. I found this project over at Maker World, and it was put together by a user called Acolyte. As always, you'll find links in the description to the full project and all of the bits and accessories that you'll need if this is something that you want to put together for yourself. So with all of that said, let's check it out. The concept for this project is really simple. There's a box with some buttons on it and pressing one of those buttons triggers an action in Home Assistant. The brains of the operation is all powered by an ESP32 and that connects together some of the components like this small SH1106 which is just a 1.3 OLED display and also this 1x4 membrane keypad. The components are all connected together and housed inside of this 3D printed enclosure and then using this box you can trigger actions in Home Assistant. You can assemble and house these components however you want, but you will need a 3D printer if you want to make use of the same enclosure. And if you don't have a 3D printer, you can make use of an on-demand 3D printing service like those available from PCBWay, who conveniently are the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay are your one-stop shop for CNC, 3D printing, PCB design and assembly, and much, much more. You can make use of their on-demand 3D print service and simply just upload an STL file that you want to be printed. From here you can then choose from a wide range of different materials and finishes that you want your file to be created in. You can then set the quantity and place an order and from here you'll have a full insight and full traceability right up until the product's delivered to your door. So go check out PCBWay today. One of the really nice things about this project is the fact that it is really nicely laid out and it isn't too complicated to actually set up and build. If you're looking to get started with ESP Home and using Home Assistant, then this one's a nice fun project to actually ease you in. And if you just wanted like a little button box to put in your workshop or to trigger a few scenes, then again, this one's a really nice one to do. Over on the Maker World page, there's a full bill of materials detailing all of the different components and parts, everything from the screen right down to the screws. And if you use the Maker World page, you can actually buy all of the screws straight through that and have them sent straight to you. This is actually the first time I've ever used one of Maker World's bill of materials, and it does work really well. I'm actually quite surprised. I don't know if the person that created it gets any kind of kickback from this, but it is nice that you can actually just make a little one button click solution for somebody that wants to build your thing. Alternatively, if you've got these screws and other little bits lying around, then you don't need to buy anything, but if you wanted to buy the parts individually, of course you can just do whatever you want to do. The build for this project just involves flashing an ESP32, and then just assembling all of the components using a little wiring diagram, which again is on that Maker World page. Following Acolyte's instructions are very easy, and they've done a great job with including everything that you need to do, as well as also covering pain points, so things where you might have a potential issue, or things that you might need to do to resolve something else. I followed these instructions, and they do work, and they do work well, but there are a few things that I would change, and there are a few things that I did change, so let's talk about those. Using the default provided ESP sketch, you've got access to four different buttons, and you can use these buttons to trigger whatever scenes, scripts, automations, whatever it is you want to trigger, you can make use of these four different buttons to do so. The screen for the device is also always on, and there's no way to turn this off, so potentially if you've got this on for a long period of time, it could potentially result in burn-in, so this is the first thing that I fixed. I updated the code and added a few new features and a few new functionalities, the first one is a customizable screen timeout. After you've pressed a button, after a set period of time, the screen will then turn off and you'll need to wake the screen up before using it again. I then also added a screen power switch so you can manually turn the screen on and off. And this might be useful if you want the screen to be on during set periods and off during other times like overnight or times where you're not in your workshop, office, wherever you've got this screen set up. I also wanted to expand on the functionality of the buttons. I thought about maybe adding a double press or triple press, things like that, but because of the type of keys this is using, those little membrane keys are quite tricky to actually focus on a point. So what I instead did was I worked on a page solution. If you press and hold on one of the buttons, it will move to a set page. So there's four different pages that you can use. If you press and hold on a button, say button three, it'll move to page three. And on one of these set pages, you've then got access to four different actions. So essentially we've gone from four different actions up to 16. To complement all of these new features, I also added some additional sensors and I even created some button presses in Home Assistant so you could manually use Home Assistant to actually change one of the set pages. 
If you wanted to be able to dynamically customize the text that's on the screen, you could do this by exposing some input text. I didn't choose to do this because for my device, it's just going to be static. So I was happy with just setting all the values within ESP Home and just flashing it straight to the device. But if you wanted to expand on this, you could. To make the configuration of the button box a bit simpler and a bit cleaner, I also created this little blueprint, which will allow you to just configure and customize the device. Using the blueprint, you can actually control what all of the different buttons do and have them trigger different scenes or automations. Using the blueprint, I also bind the actions against the device. So if you happen to set up multiple button boxes, the use of the ESP keypad actions will be tied to that unique device. So pressing button one on one box won't trigger the same action as the same button on another box. In the blueprint, there's also a guard action. And what this does is basically it stops you pressing a button and having it automatically trigger the device if the device's screen's off. This means that you have to be able to see the screen before you trigger an action and I thought this might be useful if you're in a workshop so if the device is asleep you first need to wake it up before triggering an action. And again all of this is configurable and customizable and all of these changes and features that I've added are all linked in the description below so go and check them out if you want. After playing around with the ESP side of things and getting it working how I wanted the next thing that I actually played around with and changed was the assembly. With the original instructions, you do need to do a bit of soldering and also cut off some headers for some of the different components. And this just allows everything to fit in nicely inside of the enclosure. But for me, I'm a little bit lazy and I didn't want to do any soldering. And I also didn't want to modify any of the components just in case I actually reuse them in other projects or I expand a bit more on this project. For my use case and how I plan on using this little button box, I wasn't worried about keeping that slim form factor. So what I instead did was just modify the design and just allow it to be that little bit taller. By making the box just that little bit taller meant I didn't need to worry about the size of the components. I didn't have to cut off any header pins and I didn't have to do any soldering. Instead, I could just make use of Wago clips and just Wago everything together. Using my new code and my modified design, I ended up creating a button box that works and functions how I want it to. I've been making use of it in the workshop to control the printers, turn off lights and run different scenes. It works great and it is really a fun little project to get started with ESP Home. Because of the nature of the project, you could easily just add on a bigger screen, add on additional buttons or even add additional components and sensors, things like microphones, speakers, NFC readers, literally you can do whatever you want. But there we go guys, that's been a little look at the Home Assistant button box project. If you are interested in seeing me do a full walkthrough of this project, then let me know in the comments below. In the video description, you'll also find links to that full Maker World page where you can go through Acolyte's full instructions. And you'll also find links to the additional ESP home code that I created and also that taller button box, just in case you're one of those people that also just likes to wago all of the things. If you have enjoyed this video and found it interesting, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you aren't already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. A massive thank you to PCBWay and also these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.